My brothers and sisters, today I'm going to reveal to you a secret. So you may know, said the Lord, that he is always with you. So the title of this message, God is with you. But, but before we start, we are going to light up a candle, sound the shofar and ring the bell. So we may advance before the throne. We are going to ask God to bless this message, bless the subscribers and those who will subscribe to his channel and to bless those who will share his message and those who will comment, give them the Holy Spirit so they will uh, give good comments to edify those who will watch the video. So without delay, we are going to start right now. In the book of Haggai, hallelujah, let's go right there to the scripture in the book of Haggai. And this time we will go to the verse, we are going to read verse 13 to, to, four, to 15, 13 to 15. But this is in the verse 15 that you will see that date, the 24th day of the sixth month. Because tomorrow will be the 24th day of the sixth month. And this is when God said to his people that I am with you. Uh, let's start with verse 13. Hey guy, the Lord messenger gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. Hallelujah. And when God told me this week, there is a secret in this word. And he said, this secret can cause you to be successful in your life. Uh, this word saying, I am with you. God is with you. Put that into your mind, starting today, that God is with you. When you know God is with you, guess what? There is nothing that you cannot do. Okay? It's not about what people are saying. Then he guy, the Lord messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up. Listen to this. When God is with you, he's going to cause a stir. He will stir up a, your spirit. Listen to the scripture, verse 14. So the Lord, let's go over here, stir up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Sheol, Tiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Josedak, the high priest. Listen to this. You know, God will stir up your spirit. And the spirit of the whole remnant of the people until your spirit is stirred up to actually feeling within yourself that God is with you. Guess what? You are not mandate. You, you have not given the mandate to do it yet. And listen to the next sentence. They became and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God. And verse 15 identified the date when God practically teach, taught his people something. And this is the date on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of Darius. Listen to this. Let's go to the calendar right now. So I can show you something. Let me put right now. Okay. Let me put right now. I, I have a tanim in front of me. Let me go and search for. <clears throat> so search for. Let's go to pa, 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 over here. Let's click this. And we go and click that. Some of you, you may not see what I'm doing, but 
I'm going to the calendar to pick the month of Elul for you because right now we are in Elul. Okay, let's go over here. Where are you, Elul? And here is Elul. Okay, very good. Now we have the month of Elul. Let's clear everything and make sure that it is well. Okay, you can see. Uh, can you see with me right now the month of Elul? Let, let me put that in a big way so you may see it. Today is what? The 23rd day of Elul. Tomorrow will be the fourth day of Elul. Uh, the 24th day of Elul. So, I'm going to tell you something. You have three consecutive days of prayer in the calendar of God. Today, uh, 9, tomorrow, nine, uh, September 9, which is uh, the 23rd day of, of Elul. Uh, tomorrow will be September 10 the 24th day of Elul, and tomorrow is a, another special day. This is the day, practically, every 24th day of the month in the calendar of God. We know this is a brand new cycle of blessing. We imagine in the day of the brand new cycle of blessing, the Lord said, you know, your spirit will be stirred up. Your spirit will be stirred up in order for you to get what? Your blessing tomorrow. Amen and amen. And, and on Monday, which is the 11th, uh, uh, September 11, Monday, September 11, it's a, a bad day for the United States. This is when we remember Septem September 11, which was a day of disaster when uh, the United States was, was on the attack, but in the calendar of God, this year is the 25th day of Elul, and uh, this is when Nehemiah and his people completed, you know, the building of the wall of the of Jerusalem, and which is a another significant day. This is. And, and we could say this happened to America because America wasn't protecting its wall. So Monday will be a day for you to protect your wall, said the Lord. A day to protect your wall. So listen to this. Today, September 9, a day of prayer. Tomorrow, September 10, another day of prayer. Uh, which which will be the brand new cycle of blessing and also and also the day when God stir up the people of Israel so they may start rebuild the temple of the Lord and Monday the 11th you know this is the time when they completed the building of the walls of Jerusalem that will be also on Monday a day to be careful. A day to be careful, protect your wall. You cannot take chance and go over there when you should be in God, you in Satan or in sin, in filthiness. So let let us uh, let me put down this calendar here so you may know what's going on in Haggai chapter one. So they received the order. Okay, the Holy Spirit said, said to me, I must say something to you. Here's the secret. The Lord said, right here at that time, in the time of a guy, this is when he said to the people, okay, he stir up their heart and tell them to, to practically begin the work of his house the rebuilding of his house so the lord said in order for me to be with you you have to see in everything that you do it's like you building or rebuilding practically his temple so whatever here's the secret that i must impart unto you every time you are doing something 
If it's not of the Lord, guess what? The Lord will not be with you. If it's not to the building of his kingdom, the Lord will not be with you. But if what you are doing is to build his kingdom, to advance his kingdom, the Lord will be with you. Listen to me. This is what you should have in mind before you enter a project. Is this project to the building of the kingdom of God? Will the kingdom of God benefit from it? And when it, you settle the matter with God and you turn over the matter with God, you are not going to force something on the Lord. You are not going to impose your, your, your little project on the Lord. But the Lord said, when everything that you are doing and the objective, this is the secret, to the building of his kingdom, of his temple, guess what? The Lord shall be with you. And the Lord said, I am with you. I am with you. As you purpose yourself to build things for him. You understand now? As you purpose yourself to build things for him. And it shall be with you. You imagine the people of Israel. Let's go to the beginning of the chapter. They received the, the call to rebuild the temple of Israel. On the first day of the sixth month. And they finally have the courage to start the building on the 24th day of the month of Elul. This is why I'm saying to you, and the angels are out there to practically encourage you and force you to be about your father's business. Until you realize that, guess what? You will be always defeated. And if you, can, if you cannot fight sin, you find sin pleasurable you always fall into it you lie to yourself you will be defeated all the time and this is another thing you cannot associate yourself with defeated people wicked people they pretending to be with god and they sin all the time you distance yourself because this person has a curse on them well you know you cannot searching for blessing and you have a curse people around so they received the mandate and, and listen to a guy chapter two, a, a verse one chapter, a, a chapter one verse two. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the, the Lord's house. They, they're making excuses. Okay. It's like if you are doing something for the temple of God, you, it, Satan or you will end up having that excuse. I'm not opening that business. I'm not doing this yet. I don't have this. I don't have that. I cannot afford. The time is not yet come. And listen to this verse 3. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet. Hey guy, is it a time for you yourself to be living in your panels houses while this house remains a ruin? Is it the time to do something good for the Lord? Is it, is it the time to do good for yourself, not to do good for the Lord? To build your own house and not to build the house of the Lord. So now this is when God said to the, to the people, give careful thought to your ways in verse 5. Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Look at the way you are living. This is the correct word. Look at the way you are living, wicked people. Give careful thought to your ways. And he's saying, this is what the care, the curse that you have in your life. Verse 6, you have planted much, but harvested little. You are always working. You are always killing yourself. And yet you have nothing. You harvested yellow. You eat, but you never have enough. That means you eat. And guess what? You're still hungry. And you see them out there hungry for things, hungry for things. You drink, but never have your feel. That means you never satisfied. You put on clothes, 
But guess what? If it's cold, you feel you feel the cold run right through your clothes and hit you. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Sometimes you have to look at it. When you see a lot of people are checking you, you make the money. A lot of people are checking you. You know, they're punching and put hold into your bag. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Guess what? Because your mind is not right. What you are doing will not advance the kingdom of God. What you are doing will not improve the kingdom of God, will not enrich the kingdom of God. You are not about to bring change in the life of the people of God. Let me put the scripture before you because I keep reading it and uh, without putting it in front of you. Is it, verse 4, let's go back again. Is it a time for you yourself to be living in your panel's house, you, you can read that. I put it right in front of you now. Is it the time for you to live in luxury? And not the time to build something for me. You see what I'm saying? So God will check out your greed, your greediness. You know, your willingness to puff up yourself. To make yourself look good. So the Lord said, give careful thought to your ways. Give careful thought to your ways. Do you see how you, you are living? And he has saying, this is why whatever you're doing will not benefit you, will not profit you. This is the secret. So we, we don't have to go further. So, so the Lord said, you know, you go out there and do what you're supposed to do. And... Uh, and uh, verse 9 is crazy. He said, e e verse 8 is nice too, and saying, So go out there and build my house so I may take pleasure in it and be honored. Always think about honoring God. You work, if you have a job, you know, you may say, Ah, you know, I'm not out there building the Lord's house, but. Through your job, when you give to the church, you are building the Lord's house. You're hoarding things for yourself. And the Lord said, this is what I do to you. Verse 9. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. And he said, why? Why do you think I let that happen to you? He said, because of my house. This is why I said to people, don't go to church. If you are going to sit on the bench and, do, and you are not helping this church, don't call yourself a member of a church if you will never help that church. God said, I will blow away everything that you have. That you have. He said, because of you, verse 10, the heavens have withheld their dew, and the earth is crap. He said, because of you, there is curse in the land. I call, I call for a drought, verse 11, on the field, on the mountain, on the grain, on the new wine, the olive oil, and everything else the ground produces on people and livestock. And this is the scary part. And all the labor of your hands that's mean you are working and guess what you are it's not profiting you so now there is hope there is hope on this is why we call the 24th day of every month you know when the new cycle of blessing are entering your lives every month for the saint to have a chance to jump on, 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 uh, practically, on, uh, on, uh, the blessed wagon of the Lord. Amen. So you may enter the cycle of blessing of the Lord. And this is when we hear on the 24th day of the month, 
tomorrow of, of the month of Elul and tomorrow is the 24th day of the month of Elul when God declare, I am with you. I am with you. I am with you. Amen and amen. But this happened because of something that happened or when we are reading verse 12. Then Zerubbabel, son of Sheatiel, and Joshua, son of Josedar, the high priest, and the whole remnant of the people, obey the voice of the Lord their God and the message of the prophet guy. Would you obey the message that I bring you today? Will you be obedient, obedient to God? Will you obey the voice of the Lord your God? That means when you will be kingdom, kingdom minded, everything that you are doing is to profit. Is to profit. You know, the house of the Lord. To the building or the rebuilding of the house of the Lord. You are not bringing shame to the house of the Lord. And this is another, another part. When you don't support, when you don't do things that will cause the house of the Lord to have, to be honored in the community. It, uh, all, it, it, for people to respect Lord Jesus' house of prayer, for example. Guess what? You are tearing up. You are not obeying the voice of the Lord, your God. And curse will fall upon you. And the Lord is saying, you know, I am with you. I am with you. Every time you decide to obey, this is what you see here. And they decided to obey the voice of the Lord your God. And to be about the building, or we would say here, the rebuilding of the Lord's house. And this is the secret. When God is with you, you will feel a stir. You will feel a stir within you. You know, within your spirit. Because the God's spirit will be upon you to stir up your spirit. And you, we see here, you know, and, uh, and they said, uh, and the leaders, they receive the stir of their spirit. Zerubbabel, the spirit of Zerubbabel was stirred up. The spirit of uh, Joshua the priest was stirred up and the whole remnant, everybody, their spirits stirred up and the cause is to profit and benefit the Lord's house. My brothers, my sisters, do you want to be blessed? Be about in everything, you know, to bless the Lord's house and God said, you know, he will not blow away your blessing anymore. Do you want to be blessed? Get this secret. Get this secret, my brothers, my sisters. Be about the Lord's house. Through your job or through your business of what you are doing, always have a part and or give to the building or the rebuilding of the house of the Lord and you will see that you will be blessed year after year. I say these things in Jesus name. Amen.